All right, buddy. What's your name? Where are you from, man? I'm Joey. I'm from Rockland, Maine. Maine. Maine, Maine. Yeah. What is it? What's the temperature like out there today? I think it's 30 degrees right now. It's nice out. <laughs> That's nice? Yeah, man. It's been like 16 degrees. Oh, man. It's been brutal up here. It's been a bad winter. You lived out there pretty much your whole life? Yeah, my whole life. I moved to... I lived in Chesapeake with my dad for about a year and then Daytona Beach for a little bit. How was Chesapeake, man? Oh, man, it was off the chain down there. I went to school down there for a little bit. It was pretty fun. What school did you go to? I, I don't, I can't even remember it, man. It, it was right in Chesapeake Bay. Oh, were you, um, uh, was, were you, oh, middle school? Yeah, middle school, yeah. Okay, yeah, I went, yeah. I went to, I lived in Chesapeake probably my whole life, man. I grew up out Indian River. I don't know if you ever heard of that area, but, uh. Before we get oh, started, huh? It was a big school. Like they gave us uniforms for gym class and everything. Oh damn, damn. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what school that might have been. Might have been know. like I don't know, but uh, but yeah, man. You 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 told me some crazy stories. Yeah. A, cra a crazy rundown of your life, being the oh, son of a hell's angel. You know, yep. and rest in peace to your father. You know, I heard you told me that I'm sure we're going to talk about that, too. But rest in peace to him. And, you know, uh, you pretty much were running with your father when you were younger, correct? Yeah, we were like we were more like best friend kind of scenario instead of father son type of deal, you know. OK, now uh, when you were in Chesapeake, was he was a hell's angel, I'm guessing. Yeah. OK, yep. so in Chesapeake, believe it or not, I used to pay my rent next to a hell's angels clubhouse oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah man and that jank was legit i mean i had cameras around the whole thing they just sold it as a matter of fact they had cameras around it sometimes man there would be dudes standing around every corner of the house you know that they're having some kind of meeting in there you know what i mean yeah, it was like right. bodyguards around the place and every time i went to go pay my rent i would look forward to checking out the old clubhouse <laughs> Oh yeah, it's fun, man. So I'm yeah, guessing that's where I, I grew up at the clubhouse up here in Maine. I used to I used to ride go karts and dirt bikes with the president of the Hell's Angels in Maine, his son. I used to ride go karts and dirt bikes and shit up at the clubhouse. That's crazy, man. So tell me a little bit about how you know growing up with your father being a Hell's Angel, man. How how did it kind of because you said you're you were kind of like best friends and uh, I can only imagine what that means because I know I've done interviews with other individuals that had parents like best friends they ended up yeah. doing drugs and stuff together and crazy wild stuff so let's let's hear your input man yeah that's how it was with me and him um so my mom my mom told my grandmother one night I was I was about like four or five months old she said can you watch Joey for the night so I can go to the bar well Long story short, my mom ends up out in California for five or six months, left me with my grandparents. So when she came back, my grandparents weren't having it. They weren't giving me back to her, so they ended up taking custody of me. Um, my dad was in prison until I was 10. He, uh, he was in the Hells Angels up here, and they were doing some drug deals with an undercover cop. And the president of the Hells Angels found out this dude was a cop. So we sent my father and my uncle Toby to his house. And uh, sent him there to rob him. So he, my dad kicks in this cop's door. No one's home. Ends up going into his gun cabinet, taking all of his guns. There's Christmas presents under the tree. They took all them things. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. So they ended up getting caught for that. Um, was the uh, was the undercover cop trying to like? Uh, was he actually trying to play uh, a role? Trying to infiltrate. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to infiltrate the Hell's Angels. Yeah. So he was like a biker cop. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy. And they were all cool. Like, he was up at the clubhouse partying with them and stuff, and and then they found out he was a cop, so they let him have it, man. They, he's lucky he went home because he'd probably be dead. Like, yeah. they were on a mission. They were going to mess this dude up. Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad was pretty wild back in his day. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, so he did He did prison time till I was 10, um, and then he got out, and he moved up to Bangor, Maine, and he was doing okay. And I was starting to get into trouble at that point, and my grandparents couldn't really handle me, so I went to go live with him when I was like 12, something like that. And uh, I was doing a lot of Xanax, stealing cars and stuff, you know. 
Stealing so, cars. That was, that was the story that you that you told me about, man. I'm kind of interested in. How'd you go about stealing cars? What was your technique? Because I've stolen a couple cars in my time as well. <laughs> yeah, I just look for the look for the ones with keys in them, bro. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I went back and forth from my dad's house to my grandparents. I didn't like my dad's girlfriend. We didn't get along. She had a few stepkids, and he had a few stepkids, and we were always fighting and shit. So I moved back in with my grandmother, and I ended up uh, – I, I broke into a garage one night, and I stole a truck, and I robbed a store. I, well, I didn't rob the store. I broke in at night while it was closed and stole a bunch of beer and stuff. So I went to juvie for that. I ended up going to juvie for that for a year. And I got out, and my dad was getting ready. He had a business. He was getting ready to move down to Chesapeake. And um, I ended up going with my buddy to a job interview. And uh, I was on Xanax, and it was a ways away. And I didn't want to walk home, so I stole this car, Mitsubishi Eclipse. And I rear-ended this old lady at a stoplight. I, I see a few of my buddies drive by, and here I am in a Mitsubishi Eclipse thinking I'm right cool. So I see a few of my buddies, and I'm waving to them, and this girl stopped in front of me, and I rear-ended her. How old were she you? Gets, I was like 13, 14. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> hey, she gets out, and she says, how old are you? And I said, I looked at her, I said, not old enough to drive. And I took <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, so, my God. And took um, off. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I bolted. So I, I ended up making it up to this field up by my grandparents house I drove this car way up in the field and I opened the glove box and the dude had his phone and his wallet in there so I used his phone and called the taxi and uh he had like 20 bucks in his wallet I used that to pay for the cab got my ass up out of there and that's how I got caught the cab driver ratted me out Damn. so I'm at my buddy's house and the cops go to my grandparents house looking for me and she calls me up and she tells me the cops are looking for me. So I immediately, I knew my dad was going to Chesapeake. So I called him up and asked him if I could go with him because I didn't want to go back to juvie, you know. So he's like, yeah, whatever, come on down. So I ended up going to Chesapeake, living with him down there for almost a year. And uh, his girlfriend cheated on him and uh, he got ran over. She ran him over with his truck. <laughs> so, yeah, so we ended up coming out of there and we went down to Daytona Beach and that's, that's where it all started, man. It all went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Smoking crack with him, man. Prostitutes, you name it. It's, it was off the chain down there. That's crazy, man. I can't even imagine smoking some crack with my pops, man. Oh, it was crazy, man. Yeah. It was he, like he, I don't know, he, he just lost his woman. Like, he got uprooted, you know what I mean? He was doing so good for so long, and. I don't know. He was just depressed about the whole situation with him and his girl, so he didn't really give a shit about much. Yeah. Did he ever? Uh, did he ever bring you around any kind of uh, clubs? Like you said in the beginning, when you you went over there and did some go karting and stuff like that. Did you ever see any other crazy kind of activities based upon the Hell's yeah. Angels? Yeah. So the president of the Hell's Angels up here in Canaan, Maine, he had a daughter. She was like seventeen or eighteen. She was buying fentanyl patches off this old man, right? He was like 80 years old, dude. And uh, so the guy calls my dad, my uncle Toby, and I'm with him at this time. And he says, hey, go over there and handle this dude. He's selling fentanyl patches to little kids. So <laughs> my dad goes, we got to make a stop real quick. We pull up to this dude's house. They kick the door in. I, I'm i nosy, so I go in behind him. The dude's got a life support thing on. Like, if he pulls it. Like, it'll call the ambulance, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's sitting there threatening it, like it's around his neck, and he's sitting there telling my dad and my uncle, come any closer, I'm going to pull this thing, and the ambulance is going to come, and the cops are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad says, oh, yeah, and he grabbed that thing, bro, and he wrapped it around his throat and started choking him out with it. That's it crazy. Right yeah. Yeah, so the ambulance and shit ended up coming. We got out of there, but he stole. He took all of his fentanyl patches and shit. Told him to stop selling to little kids. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's crazy, man. So that... I've seen a lot of stuff. Yeah. We uh, I was over at my my uncle's house with my dad one night, and uh, my dad's girlfriend was messing around with this another biker. He's from uh, the Iron Horsemen. I don't know if you've ever heard of them or not. No, I've never heard of them. But. The uh, the national enforcer for the Iron Horseman was my dad's old lady, right? And uh, my dad 
came home one day and he seen the guy left his leather jacket at the house. So my dad took a red can of spray paint and spray painted an 81 on the back of this dude's biker jacket. Yeah. 81 Hells Angels HA. And the guy ended up coming to my uncle's house, kicking the door in with a baseball bat. And he hit this dude in the head and my dad got the bat from him and he had it up under his neck like this, choking him out on the ground. I'm like 14. I take my belt off and start whipping this dude with my belt. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, yeah. My dad's like, how do you feel now, you little punk? My 14-year-old son's whipping you with a belt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's wild, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I met, I met, uh, I met Godsmack up at the uh, clubhouse, up in Hells, up at the Hells Angels clubhouse in Canaan. He came they up came there? To, yeah, they came to do a concert in Bangor, and my dad and a few of his buddies did security for him. Yeah, and they came up and they partied at the clubhouse for the night. That's wild, man. Yeah, pretty wild. Damn right. Got, my dad played the drums and shit, so I got pictures of Sully Irma on my dad's drum set playing the drums and stuff. That's wild, man. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I can't even imagine having that kind of life, man. You know what I mean? I've done some crazy wild stuff, but having a father as a, as a hell's angel, man. I knew a couple people that had fathers as hell's angel, and I ain't gonna lie, they have kind of a similar story. My homeboy, uh, we called him 13 in prison. Yeah. Man. He told me stories all the time of them, of them smoking crack together and stuff like that. I was like, damn. Uh, you know, it, it's wild, man. It's wild. And a lot of people don't know too much. But a lot of people don't know too much about these biker gangs, man. You know what I mean? Or, uh, you know, and they think a lot of them are dead, you know. But for real, I see uh-huh. them. Man, I see them all the time. Out here in Virginia. I think in Daytona. I think Daytona they have like the Red Devils or something like that. There's not too many Hells Angels down in Daytona. Yeah. I think my dad got into some beef one night with some guys down there, Red Devils or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, let me turn roll this window up, man. I'm freezing. I'm out in my car. Yeah. Hold out. 13, 13 degrees. 13 degrees. Yeah, you gotta roll that money up. 30 degrees. Oh, 30 degrees. 30 degrees. That's yeah, it's warm. It's warm out today. <laughs> that's wild as hell, man. So, uh, you ever come into, like, contact with uh, any of these old cats that your pops used to chill with? Yeah. Have, have, you ever yeah been, actually, have you ever been influenced to try to join the club? No, man. I've never. No, not really. You know, I've been staying out of trouble. Yeah. I just got caught up to some drug charges recently, though. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. Oh yeah. You said. Wait. I don't know if it was you that said it, but you said you might be facing some time. Uh, I'm going three years. Oh, you're going. Yep. Okay, you're going yeah, away. May thirty first. May thirty first. Thirty first. I gotta go turn myself in. Yep. They and... gave me a stay so I could see my son get born. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. It's all good. It's all good. That's what I wanted to talk about too. Can you see me? Yeah, I got you. I got you. You, I remember, because I got a lot of people telling me stories, and I can't remember exactly which story goes to which person, man. I, you'd be surprised how many people want to tell their story, but tell me about that, man. Uh, you said that you're turning yourself in on May 31st, and they're allowing yeah. you to stay out because uh, you can, so you can see your child be born. That's almost unheard of. I've never heard of that before. Let me let me hear yeah. how how that happened. So... Uh, I went to court. They told me pretty much because me and my wife got in trouble together. She got a trafficking charge, and I had, at first, mine was conspiracy to commit trafficking, but then they upped it to an aggravated trafficking. So the deal was with my lawyer and the DA that if I pled guilty, because I probably could have beat these charges, keep that in mind. They didn't have no wire buys on me. They didn't catch me with anything. All they had was one of the guy's word against mine. So I probably could have beat these charges, and the prosecutor knows that, you know. But if I took it to trial, he was going to give my wife two years in prison. So what do I do? You know what I mean? I'm not going to send my wife to prison. So I took the deal they gave me, and that was six years, all but three years suspended with three years probation. And uh, so, yeah, I took that deal, and... Part of me taking that deal was I have a son on the way. I asked them if they could delay sentencing until the 31st. That's and they agreed. 
And, yep. it, and I think you said, how many kids you got? I got four girls and a boy on the way. Damn, you're lucky, man. I've been trying to get that boy, man. I got a fourth girl. Hey, when you hit that baseball and that white powder, that pink powder came out, man, I feel for you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. You're lucky, man. You're lucky. I know the feeling, bro. I got four girls trying to get a boy. And, like, I'm the, I'm the only person that can carry on my family name, so I had to have a boy. You know? Yeah, that's how I feel the same way, man, same way. Well, my cousin uh has my same last name and he has a son so they'll be able to carry but i'm on my my side you know what i mean me right, right. so uh yeah, right. but but yeah man congratulations on that so that's cool man right. they they agreed to do that but at the same time it's not cool because they were threatening to lock your girl up if you don't plead guilty to years, it for two years and she's never been in trouble never had no no nothing on her adult record she had some juvenile stuff but yeah they're gonna lock her up two years if I didn't agree to take the plea deal. If that's, I was going to take the trial, she was screwed. <laughs> that's messed so, up, man, how they do, how they hold stuff against you like that, but it they is. Do, they do some things up here called deferred dispositions. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, I think I have. It's like, like if you stay out of, if you, you plead guilty and you don't get sentenced right away, you get a deferred disposition. And if you stay out of trouble for a certain amount of time, they go easier on your sentence. Okay, so it's kind of like a uh, pre-trial type of thing, like a uh, yeah, kind of yeah, like court type of deal kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, like a pre-trial. They wouldn't do that for me though. <laughs> <laughs> they have... Yeah, <laughs> I me... got a record and friggin'. Crazy. Yeah. Did, did they bring up your juvie stuff in the courtroom? Because you know they say it's supposed to be locked. Yeah, they always do, and and they say it, and then they say they're not supposed to use it, but still the judges heard it. You know what I mean? It's in the back of his head. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's that's a little petty, man. I don't understand why they yeah. do that. Oh uh, man, our our prosecutor's a little weasel. I tell you, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. We I played basketball with him down at the rec center. He play. He goes down there and plays men's league. Yeah. I'm always following him. <laughs> oh man, I hate that. One. <laughs> That's wild, man. That's wild as All hell. Right. Let me ask yeah. you this. Uh, so, what are you doing? I mean, like, what do you what do you think you're gonna be doing? Like, do you think juvenile kind of has you prepared for adult jail or what? Yeah, I mean, I'll. I've done, I've done two years juvie. I did nine months down in Daytona, and I'm, I've done like a handful of county bids up here. I had a trafficking charge. I did nine months in the county up here. The county up here is a joke, dude. It's like, it's like the first season of friggin' sixty days in that county jail is a joke. You know? <laughs> well, that's not bad. That's that's kind of good, I guess. Pretty laid back and chill. You know, but yeah. uh, well, at least you know the ropes and everything. What do you? How do you feel? I want to talk about your your charge here in a second. But uh, how do you feel about my content, man? Do you think it, uh, based upon where you're at, it kind of is it good information? Yeah. Oh yeah. You get a lot of good stuff, man. I mean, just it's awesome. I love your show. A lot of people I know like your show. Watch your show. A lot of my homeboys watch it. That's what's but up, yeah, man. You, you get some good info, man. Definitely, number one, I would say, just don't trust anyone. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's uh, what I wrote on my prison cell. I trust no one. Yeah, trust nobody, man. Yeah. Trust one for sure. All right, well, let me ask yeah, you this, man. Have you... What? I was going to tell you, your uh, viewers, man, about this stuff that happened in Daytona with my old man. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> so I was in Florida, right, and we was drinking... I was partying at this hotel, the Corvette Inn, down in Daytona Beach, and I got into a fight with my father, and there was an ABC liquor store across the street. So uh -huh. I went in, I broke in. Broke in, and I stole a bottle of Jose Cuevo. And he heard the alarm from the hotel, so he comes out looking for me, pissed off. He's going to mess me up. And I took off running from him. Well, he found me a couple of hours later. I was right next to a, a little mini golf place. I took a big boulder out of this mini golf place and threw it through the front window of this convenience store. I needed cigarettes. So <laughs> I go in there. <laughs> Listen, I go in there to get some cigarettes, right? And my dad sees me robbing this place, and he comes in to, to pull me out. 
And on the camera, it looks like he's robbing the place with me. Oh, so my he God. Ended up getting, yeah, so we, we got caught, and he ended up getting five years for child neglect. What? Time. Yeah, Jasper County, Florida. He did he did five-year five year prison sentence down there for that. That's yep. crazy, man. Did they uh did they ask you if you had if it was just all on you or what? I mean, he was kind of trying to help you, I, wasn't he? I kept telling them they put they put me in a cop car and they put him in a cop car in front of me, and they spun their spotlight around and was shining it into the cop car that I was in because I was trying to talk to him, and they weren't having it. They weren't letting me talk to him, and I kept telling them. I said, "Look, he just come in to get me. He was just coming in to get me, but they weren't. Having it. They didn't even." They didn't get they didn't even have you in a courtroom or anything talking about it? We didn't go to court together, but we went to the county jail together, and they put us in holding cells right next to each other. That's and crazy, he's like, man. He's like, you got to tell them I was going in, and I tried telling them. I tried telling the lawyer of the day. They railroaded him, man. <laughs> That's messed yeah. up, man, you know? Take five years for that. And you said, uh, you said now, ha have you already been found guilty of your charges? Yeah, um, I got found guilty, but they delayed sentencing until May 31st. Uh, yeah. But damn, you said you got aggravated trafficking? How, what the hell does aggravated trafficking even mean? What does aggravated have to do with it? It was in a school zone. It was a thousand feet from a school, so they upped it from Class B to a Class A. Aggravated, uh, I guess. That's crazy. But, yeah. I mean, it's, so, not, it's not crazy, but it is crazy, because, you know, a lot of people... They sell drugs and stuff near schools, but they don't really understand that that's like a whole nother uh, serious felony if you're like within a certain radius of a school. Yeah. Well, I weren't even. We weren't even selling drugs, man. And this is what happened: is I got back in. I got back into the dope, and um, I was getting. I was going scallop out of Massachusetts, making all kinds of money, you know. And I was getting this stuff pretty cheap. And my wife's parents, they did it, you know. So I was getting them the deals that I was getting, bringing back a little bit when I got home from fishing. I was bringing them back some stuff, and, and they were the ones selling it, right? And uh, me and my wife were just doing it. Well, someone that they were selling to that knows my wife couldn't get a hold of her parents that day, so she called my wife to see if my wife had any. And she was wearing a wire. She ended up coming to my house, and my wife sold her a little bit. She was wearing a wire on her, man. That's messed so, up, man. Yeah, man. I get home from a two week fishing trip. I pull in with my captain, drop me off, and there's like 20 cop cars in my driveway. They had my, I had a, um, I had a big dog, a bull mastiff on both sides. Yeah. And uh, they, they took a uh, fire extinguisher and sprayed him down when they kicked the door and sprayed my dog. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Was he, so was he, was he messed up? No, he weren't mean. He weren't a mean dog. Nicest dog you could ever, ever meet, man. They just they're scumbags, dude. I mean, is the what? dog all right? Oh uh, yeah, the dog's good. The dog's good. Get this. Remember that I was telling you in the beginning, the cop that my dad stole his firearm. Yeah. He was at my house that day, bro. <laughs> he was at my house, man. What are the odds of that? Yeah, right. He looked at me and gave me like a shit eating grin because I'm a junior. I'm joke, you know. I'm I got my dad's name, so he knows me. That cop knows me. That's crazy, he man. Me like a shit eating grin. I never knew who he was, and then that cop actually told me. He said, "Do you know who I am?" And I said, "No." Should I? Yeah. He says, "Your father robbed my house." I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> Thank that. Well, damn, dude. You yeah. know, uh, three years. I don't know how much time do you have to do on a felony out there in Maine. I don't know. I think I think I'll end up doing like two and a half, probably two and a half on three. Okay, that sounds about like down here in Virginia. I think you do like uh, you know, eighty three percent or something like that of the time. I'm not sure. About the same up here, really. I think. You think they'll send you? I mean, it's a long. Huh? It's long, but it's it's long, but it's not that long. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's enough. It's enough to hurt you, but not not to break you. Yeah, I'm not worried about prison. I got all my homeboys up in there, and my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just finally I get my son, and now I gotta leave him to go to prison. You know? Yeah. Do you think that the uh, that's kind of like my situation? My but I wasn't there for them for my twins being born. I my twin daughters. Uh, I went to jail when 
she, when she was pregnant. They were born when I was in the hole. I called from the hole, uh, and they told me, you know, that she was, my wife told me that they were born. So I got out when they were about two and a half. And uh, yeah. I missed all those stages of their, you know, two and a half. But I'll tell you this right now. When you get out, they ain't never going to remember it. The only, way that they'll, uh, the only way that they'll know is if you talk about it. And that's the only reason why my children really know about me is because of YouTube. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, of course, I told them. Uh, that I got in some trouble when they're, you know, when they're about six or seven years old. I told them that before I started doing YouTube, but I just felt as though, you know, they should know. You know, there ain't no yeah. really no way to hide, uh, especially when it comes right. to, you know, when they get older and they start seeing these tattoos and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but but you're gonna come out at a perfect age, man. They're probably already gonna be potty. Uh, he's probably already gonna be potty trained and all that, all the hard stuff. It's going to yep. be, you know, and you've yeah, already awful. experienced it. You say you got three daughters already, right? Yeah, I've, I've got a three-year-old and a two-year-old. And then I've got another girl, another daughter with a different girl in a different relationship I had. But my wife has two kids, too. She's got a 12-year-old and an 11-year-old. So, I mean, they help out. You know, they're old enough to where they can help out and they can watch the kids a little bit if she needs them, too. So. That's what's up, man. You know, I'm gonna go try to make a few scalloping trips and pay my rent up for three years and uh, get some money set aside for her and take care of her while I'm in there. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Hey, at least you got the right, you know, head on your shoulders, man. That that that's excellent. You know, a lot of people ain't even thinking about that. They're just thinking about themselves in situations like this. But that's the that's the right way to think, man. For real, you know. Yeah. Uh, got to look out for the family, man. Always. That's all we have, you know. Got him, man. I I got a pretty good setup. We live in an apartment building, and her sister lives right next door to us, so she can help out a lot too. You know? Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's like uh, yeah. That sounds just like me, man. When I first when I went in, you know, uh, my parents were neighbors to my wife, so yeah, it worked out perfectly, man. It's it's crazy how things work out like that. And uh, scalloping, man, that's crazy. I, man, uh, I hear y'all got some when good. I get back from huh? I said I'll send you some when I get back from this next trip. Shoot, I might have to come up to Maine do some do some with you. Let's go. <laughs> I'm trying to get Matt. Tell Matt, man. I'm telling you, if he needs a job, I gonna make him ten grand in a couple of weeks. That's crazy, man. The scalps don't never run out. Yeah, you got a season, and I, and it just started. Hey, you still, but man, you you still got the bully up in there? Yeah. Let me see the bulldog before you go, man. Lucy Junior. Look, that, I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but the corner of her. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Lucy <laughs> Junior, man. Yeah. Does Lucy's eyes water a lot? She does. I clean them every day, man. Yeah, you gotta clean them every day, and they, I'm fun to hear too. They stink. Yeah, man. They're <laughs> high maintenance dogs. I give her a bath every three days. <laughs> that looks just <laughs> like Lucy, man. Oh. Jim, say hi, Jim. Hey, say hi. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You're she gonna, usually has her nails all done up. Yeah, you're gonna miss her when she when you go, man. I know that. Yeah, she's my baby. She's my baby for sure. Damn, dude. Well, look, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. And May thirty first. You ain't got too much time left, man. I hope you enjoy it to the fullest. And uh, huh? I said, oh, I will. I got a little vacation plan for after the baby's born. Me and my wife are gonna take a little vacation. And Excellent, man. Excellent. And, you know, get your ducks in order with the addresses and all that stuff so you can write and call home. You know the drill. You've been locked up. Uh, yeah. And hopefully this channel's still going by the time you get out and you can come out and tell us some wild and crazy stories from lock up, man. <laughs> hopefully we can get a cell phone up in there and uh, do a video from prison. Huh? <laughs> no, nah, we can't do that, man. We can't do that. I ain't trying. The next thing you know, you'll be on the news. Yeah, we're looking at but uh yeah man i appreciate you coming on the show once again and you know that's crazy man you know let this be you know a message to 
individuals out there that have parents that are best friends, man. You know, it ain't just y'all. There's a lot of parents out there that aren't, you know, the great role models, you know. But, uh, you know, life goes on, man. You know what I mean? And you yeah. got you to gotta choose the right paths on your own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. You, you, you're going to have a good future ahead of you, man. You got got a little wisdom to you, man. And, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, you'll be all right for sure. And uh, until, you know, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on the show and telling your story. Uh, you got anything you want to say? Any shout outs before we leave? Nah, man, I'm good. Tell Matt I said, what's up? Is Grizzy out? Grizzy's out, right? No, he ain't out yet, man. They, uh-huh. they, they pushed his court date back, I think, a couple weeks. So hopefully it's still this month. But I don't know. It might be the early next month. I'm waiting for him to call me back and let me know. But, uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, Matt will for sure see this, and uh, I'll tell him, hey. I'll get up here. I'll take him scalloping. I'm not even kidding. I'll take him out in two weeks. Hey, for two sure. Weeks for sure, man. He'll make a little grip going out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. At, like, like I said, half share, he'll probably make 10 grand anyway. That's crazy, man. Wrong with that? That's wild my as last, hell. Yeah, my last trip, I went out for six days. I made 13 grand. Six Damn. days. Damn. Yeah, it's good money, dude. What do y'all what do y'all eat out there? Y'all eating a bunch of scallops? I eat scallops. Yeah, yeah. I love scallops. Yeah, damn right. Uh, man. I don't know, man. We we bring we buy like a thousand dollars worth of Red Bull and we bring all kinds of stuff. We got this girl that makes us like lasagnas and just all kinds of different kind of meals to bring out with us. That sounds like fifty a, bucks a piece. That sounds like a good time. Oh man, we have a blast. It's like prison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> kicking it with the guys and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Last, time, last last trip I was on on another boat, this Mexican dude slashed a guy's throat in the cutting box. They were cutting scallops, and this guy was running his mouth to him. And I guess the guy turned over and took a knife to his throat, <laughs> cut his throat. They had a Coast Guard helicopter out there and everything. That's crazy, man. Is it Maine where the movie The Perfect Storm took place? Uh, Mass, Massachusetts. That's where Perfect Storm took place. Yep, Mass and, and Maine, yeah. That's a, that's a damn sad story, man. You know, a lot, yeah, of, a lot of people are dying like that, man. Storms and yep. stuff, man. It's a dangerous job. Yeah, Gloucester, Gloucester, Massachusetts is where that took place. I was messed up one night. I was right drunk one night, and I went into the bar in Gloucester where, where one of them guys' moms owned that bar, the Crow's Nest, and they had pictures of all them dudes that died up on the wall, the real people that died. And they look like wicked crackheads, man. And, and I'm drunk. And I said, man, who are all these crackheads? <laughs> <laughs> it were the people that died in the perfect storm, bro. Damn. <laughs> I, I, bet, I got a lot of dirty looks for I, that one. I guess they don't look like George Clooney after all, huh? I know. But I got some weak drinks after that night. <laughs> they weren't making them strong for me anymore after that. <laughs> uh, I probably wouldn't even ask for a drink after that. You know, I would have stepped on down the street somewhere. Yeah, they wanted to kill me, dude. They, I got some looks, I'll tell you. Damn, that's wild as hell, man. Jim, you take it Jim. easy now. <laughs> All right, man, take it easy. Maybe we'll do another interview when I get out. Hey, for sure, man. If I'm still here, I, you know, you know what to do. I'll get your address. I'll write you. I'll let you know all the nonsense that's yeah, going on. Yeah, my, my P.O. box is uh, in the description of all my videos, man. Write me while you're in there. If you yeah, have some extra pictures, send them on down. I'll throw you on to uh, another episode while you locked up, man. You know what I mean? All right, bro. All right, buddy. Take it easy out there.